Who's come to my party down on the beach? Scarlett O'Hara, Tristan Zara and Jimmy Carter drank sparkling water. Lola Ferrari, Harry Houdini, Francis Bukabia, the Dalai Lama, Alistair Crowley, the girls of St. Trinians, Arthur Cravant, Bella Lugosi, George Gordon, Lord Byron, Akira Kurosawa. I saw several Gettys getting looped and Frascati, Anna Pavlovi, Lottie Lenya, the Silver Surfer, Peter Lorre, Laurel and Hardy, Crazy and Ignatz, Muccio Prada, Salvador Dali and the Flying Orlanders, John Cale and Raikuda, Saki and Taki, there goes the Glenn Fiddick, the Baron de Meyer, Frida Kahlo, Kiri de Kanawa, John McCracken, Truma Capote and the Illuminati, getting flighty and naughty, more cocktails for each. How we're going to party down on the beach? Who's persona non grata down on the beach? Who's banned from the party? Who's not on the list? Paris Hilton, Sarah Palin, Professor Moriarty, Mark Scratchy, Thatcher, Alistair Crowley, Silvio Berlusconi, Nicholas Sarkozy, most people call Simon except Simon de Puri, L. Ron Hubbard, Liberace, Donatella Versace, Flat Earth Baptist with TV ministries, media twisters with ugly histories, columnists with lying bylines and lilac eyeliner who kiss and diss. But you promised and promised I'd be on the list. You won't be missed. You're hardly martyrs, you're just masochists. It's hard to resist being a bit of a tartar down on the beach. What is this vision from over the sea? A giant white yacht. She hits the spot. A bright apparition, a nifty addition. She's a humdinger, a lulu, a peach. She's every possible figure of speech. But what perplexes us down the beach is why do they come here? Who can they be? Vanity Fair's taking photographs down on the sand. They found a power couple. He's plump and she's supple. They're having loads of laughs. He's fondling her hand. She's flashing a nipple. He has an old face. She has a cold face. But they'll both be in bold face. Maybe get a feature so we quite understand. The white ship is floating like a gull on the bay. There's dancing on deck. We hear music play. We're sure we've been spotted. They'll be coming to join us. Quite soon they'll be coming in ghostly white dinghies. They'll dance at our party and they'll take us away. Now comes the sunset down on the beach. It's hilariously trashy, all greens, gold and purples that turn the sand ashen until the sky blackens. The beaches of funfair, spectacular fireworks, whoosh right above us, day bright above us. So now my party's really got started. We dance chic to chic which is when we get startled down on the beach. The white yacht is departing, it sails out of reach. We're wholly dumbfounded, we're really downhearted. No dinghies are coming, we're stuck at the party down on the beach. The beautiful people start drifting off early, the men on the gate are sullen and useless, the barmen move slowly, the waiters are surly, the beautiful hat check is sad-eyed and listless, it's quite a fiasco down on the beach. What a strange morning after down on the beach, an ugly aftermath. I hear harsh laughter and hacking, coughing, rustling in the dune grass. Some lie inertly, each next to each. It's a master class for sociopaths. I've done with roving, there'll be no more loving, there'll be no more parties, ever or ever, down on the beach. Well, I think, I'm just going to do one more, I think, if you don't mind, which is my, this is, a serious piece of art history, as a matter of fact, though taken maybe from a particular point of view. This is only chapter one. It's called The Secret History of Modern Art. Chapter one, the plot is hatched. Our story begins with Gustave Courbet, who was a communard, by the way. He knew just which painterly button to push. A slap in the face with a fat girl's bush. And his goodbye, Baldini, Bougereau, Winterhalter, Jacques Tissot, the last of the masters had their day, and the war against beauty was underway. It's a muddy road to Paul Cezanne. If you like awkward, Paul's your man. Inedible apples, unbeddable nudes, nature in one of her nastier moods. If a carpenter made a table like that, he'd be out of a job in ten seconds flat. Your school friend Zola thought you'd gone mad, but you made it okay to paint real bad. And that was your part in the anti-art plan. So let's keep up with Vincent van Gogh's Provençal idyll with Paul Gauguin. Then that field of corn, those terrible crows, in the sullen glare of a clouded sun. Take that yellow chair and lend me an ear. Madness has entered the picture here, and modernism has truly begun. Drossiora stuff looks placid at first, but he's painting world just going to burst. A head like Bridget Riley and Op, 
and that spots epidemic of Damien Hurst, to say nothing of Stephen Sondheim's slop. They applaud Seurat as a pointillist. Did you know he was also an anarchist? Those pastoral clusters are only the start of negative force field too strong to resist. They will tear apart beauty and art. Pablo Picasso, a giant among men, said he painted like Raphael when he was ten. Came the Vion Rose, then his whole world blued. Did someone say kitsch? That's really quite rude. Which doctors to the rescue, Picasso plunged on to Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, catch a whiff of the girls, Barcelona Pong. He shut it away, sadly not for long. Then he and Brack sliced and diced and glued. Some called it cubism, which sounded crude, so Zism's go was quite a good fit. Matisse couldn't make heads or tails of it. Luke's calm a volupté that was Henri's way, and Henri would say that a businessman after a long, hard day should treat his work like an easy chair. Picasso ripped through styles like a man possessed, as if in some eerie way he guessed the needs and the greed and the hungers he'd feed of collectors to come, a predator breed. It was Picasso wheeled out the shopping cart and created the supermarket of art. Picasso, modernism's first deity, kissed the girls and made them cry. When Gary Cooper and Chaplin dropped by, his English embarrassed him and that. Why he pulled silly faces and wore silly hats. It was David Douglas Duncan's picks in life that cured his celebrity fix. When Picasso grew old, this giant amongst men, didn't paint like Raphael, but a child of ten. Raymond and Jacques really painted quite well, better by miles than their brother Marcel. But as Marcel was the toast of the creme de la creme, while Raymond and Jacques have dropped out of the frame, they're goner than gone, buster than bust, while Picasso's eating Duchamp's dust. Do you want to know the reason for this? Forget Francis Nauman's analysis. There's painful funds, et la chaux au cou, make people feel cool like nobody's fool. Marcel was a master at taking the piss. Cocteau said the trick to being a star is known just how far to go too far. Now the Picasso garden has long gone to seed, while Duchamp Inc. makes much of the product we need. If anyone can be a bell at the art world ball, with one half smart idea, a huge helping of gore, and no visible art making talent at all. Um, now, and this is, this is the final one. This is when it's not cheerful. Oh, what a shame the world has exploded. Nobody told me it was loaded. Humpty Tumpty took a big fall right from the top of the Berlin Wall, then Wall Street, any wall at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last call. It's yo ho ho, Geronimo. That's all, folks. Got to go. Goodness gracious, the world is crumbling. All the dreaming spires are tum tumbling. The Colosseum, the Golden Gate, the Tower of Pisa, the Empire State. Angkor Wat, the Parthenon, Frank Geary's Guggenheim's all gone. Rem Koolhaas and John Nouvelle, the bird's nest and the gherkin blown to hell. Prince Charles are taking this quite well. Whoops, there goes the Tajmar House and Peter St. Paul's and the Albert Hall. Stonehenge is rubble, it's goodbye to them all. My socks are sizzling, the world is burning, but who gives a shit as long as you're earning? You'll be winning the human race if you move your arm to Silas' face. The domain of lupinous liberty and wholesale hyperreality, where everything is completely free except for suckers like you and me. Splish, splash, splash, the whole world's drowning. J.G. Pallard wasn't clowning. So Tormelinos, Tangier, Torquay, Holland, the Hamptons, and Waikiki are swallowed up by the Dead Sea. Malibu, Montego, Monaco, sleep with Atlantis down below. Vintage postcards record each scene. See Venice and die in a submarine. Shiver my timbers, the world is freezing. Even a listers are snuffling and sneezing. Botox and waxing and looking nice, getting on Gorka or tabloid TV. TV. It's a heat, page six, or EC Perry, or the club of the moments of VVIP. Won't mean too much, and this is free advice when Mondo celebrity is sheeting in ice. Hubble, gubble, 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 the world just melted. That was unexpected. I really felt it. The Mona Lisa, Manet, and Monet, and Salvador Dali, who was really quite gummy, and Damon's shark and the Jeff Koons bunny have all gone gooey and oozy and runny and not worth a bean in anyone's money. So it's tar for now, the world has ended, it was broken, it couldn't be mended. And to think that I thought that our trip to space meant we'd be exchanging our ruined basement for a brand new planet of stunning replacement with butterflies and bumblebees and naturally foaming seas, alpine meadows, coral reefs, rainforest downs and windswept heaths, with very few to spoil the view, just some people I like, perhaps a few of you, but it didn't work out, so it's two to loo.
Now, if anyone wants to buy a copy of this, which is the nightclub book. Sorry? I have a hard copy, but it's a paperback. Okay. <laughs> anyway, is that what, were you expecting more? We want more. What? We want more. I don't know what. Well, I, I'm having a slight problem in reading. I've got a, what I, there's some I took out because I thought this is very encouraging for me because I thought people had uh, less of a less of a. Okay, I've got a couple more. Now this one is. I thought according to God I miss her. It's quite a bit actually. It's called for a lucky girl who made the grade. It was a bald-faced lie from a bold-faced name. Baby, don't you cry, you're just fair game. It was a nasty diss from a fashionista. You put up with this, you're just a B-lister. You'll never avoid it, so get used to the slurs. The towels embroidered read his and blurs. Your bright brown shoes with the dark blue suit, your yesterday's news, you've no parachute. You're no sweet for a soiree, you're meat for a melee. Your words are blurry because your brains are jelly. You're a four-star arse, a third banana. You've got a backstage pass to an empty banana. Cabana. I really liked her. <laughs> Are you ready for one more? Yes. Are you sure? Okay. This is also, actually, I, I, I don't know because it can sound like I'm very misogynistic, which I'm not remotely, but this sounds a little similar in some way. You're way too cool for your own, for my own, you're way too cool for my own good. Why did you come to my neighborhood? You sashayed into my local bar, which is where the serious brinkers are. They thought you were a reality star. We shared a bottle of Rioja. The nightcap was a bridge too far. We wound up at your minibar in the bedroom of your hotel suite, which was twice as long as my whole effing street. The pillows were soft, the sheets were pressed. As Brown Ferry puts it, you can guess the rest. It's morning, I got into the Latin juice. My true love is glued to the business news. My life was mine, out you know whose. In this town where I'd been ignored at best, I was now a desirable guest. The happening bars all gave us knee room. Every nightclub VIP room was turned into a she and me room. Woo, did we tread the light fantastic. I'd been a mook propping up a bar. Now I shine and pulse and rule like a star. It ended with a flicker of plastic. We sorted out of that room service scene. You dropped me off in your limousine. Gave me a cute little peck on the cheek. Said you off to see your girlfriend in Mystique. You'd be back for sure the following week. A guy in the local saw you in hello. Your party made the tattler months ago. You were with a guy who stank of style, but it worked a bit too hard on his smile. I can see I was just a bit of rough. Did you drop the way you always drop stuff? I wonder just who or what it will be that does to you what you did to me. Anyway. Okay. Okay, I think that's really tested your endurance to the limit. <laughs>